Welcome back. Now we'll see about SAP Gateway, Status Builder. The transition code is SEGW. Like for creating the program, we use the SE38. For creating a table, we use SE11. Similarly, for development of Polita service, we use the transition code SEGW. Some steps are given here, like for the creation of project. First, we have to create a project. Then we have to define data model. After data model, we have to implement different services, different methods. We need to register the service and publish the service. First, I will explain some theoretical and then I will do a practical after logging into SAP system. So once we log into SCGW transition code, here first we have to create a project. Once we create the projects, there are four different components. The first is data model then the service implementation, runtime artifacts, and the service maintenance. What is data model? The data model describes the entities and the association between the entities. An entity is a collection of fields and the entity sets, it acts as an internal table for these entity types. If you correlate this with the Web terminology we can call the entity types as a structure which can hold a single record and the entity set is acts as an internal table for this entity type. The association is used as we create the different entities like header, line item, partner, etc. But in real time, suppose you want to fetch both the entity in a single go, there we use the association. I will explain that in the next slide. Take example, in a data model, we have three entities. One is business partner. The business partner contains the partner ID, the name, address, mobile number, or many other fields of the business partner. Then we have one more entity as the SO header with the SO ID as a key field, date, partner ID, and amount, and many other fields. And my third entity type is, let's say, SO item which contain the SO ID and item number, both of the primary key, material quantity, and any other fields. So in OData, we can access the individual entity type with the respect to method. And in some case, take example, you are passing a SO number, and you want both SO header and item data should come together. So in that case, we have to link them between by making an association. Then we have to provide the cardinal, cardinality like 1 plus 2 n for SO header to item because inside one sales order we can have the multiple line items. So if you want to fetch both the entity in a single go, we have to go for the association type. Next is the navigation. What is the navigation? Take here we have the entity as business partner. We want to fetch the details of business partner, but we don't have any detail of business partner, we have the metal ID. Like we pass the metal ID only, and through this metal code, we want to find out who is the partner. So what we do, we are navigating. Like first, we are accessing this entity, passing the metal ID, then we are going to SO header. From here, we are selecting the partner ID, and from this partner ID, we are fetching the partner ID along with other fields from the business partner entity. This is called a navigation, means we are navigating from one entity to some other entity. Now next is service implementation. After creating the data types in the data model, we have to generate the runtime artifacts. When we generate the runtime artifacts, for each entity set, there are different steps like create, delete, basically the screwed queue operations. And after service implementation in runtime artifacts here, we can see system creates different classes. This will see detail in the practical at a higher level understand this. This DPC stand for data provider class and MPC is for model provider class. The model provider class gives the detail about the model, like what are the entities, what are different types, what are the associations you have developed, what is the navigation properties that all we can get in the 
model for the class and the method for creating, deleting, reading. This is all we do in the DPC accession class. Once we register a service, like after we implement all the methods, we have to register a service into the ICP system. Once we register that service, then in the transaction called SICF, we can see that service by this part. This is, I just explained in a theoretical way. Now I will log into SAP system. I will see all this in the SAP system. Now here we have to go to the code SCGW. Let me log in again. Transaction code is SCGW. Here, first we have to create a project. You can give any name, let's say ZSales3. Give a meaningful description, test of all data. Either you can go for local objects and if you want to transfer, to give the package here. So, here I'm going as a local objects. So, as I explained, when we create any projects, we can see the four components. So here, based on our requirement, we have to create the entity types. Here we can we can create the entity types with three methods. One is this is a manual creation. Second is by the import option with the DDIC structure, and third is RFC BR objects. This all we'll see in actual practical. So as of now, I'm just going with the create entity or entity type. Here we have to give the entity type name. Take example. We are creating a SO header entity type. So here we'll give entity name as SO header, select this checkbox to automatically create the entity set. As I explained, this is a structure which can hold a single record and this will be act as an internal table. So now this is we can consider as the SE element structure name. Now we have to add the fields inside this structure. For that, double click on properties. Here, click on append row. So take example, my first field is VBELN. And as this will hold a record, so we have to give the key field that is key field. Yes, the VBELN is my key field. Here, we have to select that type, like whether it is a string or date field. We have to select the respective type from these available data types. So here I'm going with the string. Second, let's take an example of ER dead. That is get field. So here I'm selecting the date and time field. So this name we use in the front end system. And you can also provide the length if you want to restrict some length here for the string and all. So this is how we create the simple entity type. Just save first. Now Similarly, as I created here the SO header, you can create the multiple entity types like partner ID, sexual right, etc. And we can make the association between them and a navigation property. Now, once we're done with data model, we have to click on this generate runtime art or runtime objects. If you see here in runtime artifacts, there is no arrow, we cannot expand. Okay, so once we click on this, generate runtime objects, system will give us a pop-up. Like system is going to create those classes in the backend system. And this is the technical service name. So here the MPC stands for model provider class, which gives detail about the data model, model level details. What are the entity we have defined? What are the fields inside that entity types, the association and navigation properties? This is come under model provider class. Now, why this model border accession class? So one system generate automatically all the details. And after that, if you want to add any custom fields or custom structure, then you have to go to the accession class. The accession class is inherited from this base, base class. Data provider class. As in ODATA, we need to implement the crude queue methods 
for creating, deleting, updating, etc. So that all we do in the DPC, that is data provider class. Here also we have to add our all logic into the data provider extension class. So this gives the model details and here we do the implementation of methods. Now here technical service name because all data is service which is registered into the SAP Gateway system and which we access to the third party. So for that, this is a service name which is auto-generated. By default, it is our project name underscore SRV. If you want, you can change this, but better keep this as it is. Press enter, go into the local objects. So once the objects are created, here we can see different classes are created and we can do the further modification. That all we'll see in the actual practical. So after creation of data model, we have to generate the runtime objects. Then we have to implement the respective methods into the DPC extension class. Here, if you go to DPC extension class, we can see different methods out there for creating, updating, deleting the data. So different operations uh, methods are given. We have to redefine and add our logic there. That will seem practical. And once we done with the method implementation, then we have to register the service. What is the service maintenance? As we can have the single backend system or we can have the multiple backend system. So that integration part, registration part we have to do here. So what we have to do, right click here. Before that, just double click here first. If you see here, there is no green icon. Till it is not green, we cannot access this service from outside. So for that first, we need to register. Here it is asking the system allies, like which backend system we want to access. So here my both network gateway system and HANA system in the same. So I'm going with the local, press enter. This is adding the service, this is the service name. I'm going with local objects only, press enter. Now you can see the service registers green status, means the service is registered successfully. So once it is registered, then we can go to the SICFT code and we can check whether the service is registered or not. For that, go to SICF in the service name, enter the service name, execute. So this is the path to reach the service name, default host, that will learn more about this default host when are testing from third party, SAP, OPU, Audata, SAP, and our service name. Once we register service, we can also do testing from this SAP Gateway Client. For that, we have to click on Maintain. This all we see in practical, just for basic understanding, I'm giving some explanation about this. So once we click, the, once we click on that Maintain, we reach to this T code. Here, we have to click on the SAP Gateway Client. As I explained in, in my theoretical part, like Audita is a complete framework. This means that after developing up all data service, we can do the complete testing in the SAP system only. So this is the place where we can do all the testing of get method, post, put, and patch method. And once we are done with this, then you can give that service URL to the front-end developer for consuming the all data service. So this is all about the all data service. Remaining all part, we'll see in the actual practical session. Thank you.